All right, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, you must pass a like. Welcome back to another episode of Getting to Know the Community. Today, we got the one and only sexy and charming, the team captain, the pro player, the handsome, the brilliant, bloodhounds, Boca Rosco. How are you doing, Boca? Good, good. How are you doing, Dave? I'm doing fantastic. Well, I got a lot of questions for you today. I mean, before I get started, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Why Bloodhound? Where the name come from? Uh, you know, how long have you been playing Mobile Legends? And what do you do outside of Mobile Legends? You know, because the whole point of the interview is to get a community to know more about you outside of how good you are on Sicilian. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah, as Dave said, what's up, guys? I'm Boca Rasco, known as the Sicilian Mage or the Sicilian Main. Um, I play for Team Bloodhounds. Uh, we're a newer team. We are established players that have came off of older rosters like Aether Explicit, and we have uh, formed a new team called Bloodhounds. Um, I myself have been in the uh, Mobile Legends um, Mobile Legends competitive scene for maybe about a little under a year. Previously, I was also a play-by-play -play analyst. If my name or my face looks a little familiar, <laughs> uh, I casted back in the day in the NACT BTK versus Area 77 with Dave That's right. uh, and T Rex. Um, and uh, yeah, I mean, outside of Mobile Legends, I'm a college student full time. I'm looking to get my finance degree and um, find myself in the world. Sheesh! Oh my! Wait, how many hours are you taking right now? I'm taking 12 credits. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, that's that's decent. You know, you don't want to stress yeah, yourself too much. <laughs> I didn't want to overload myself because uh, at the same time, I am a content creator as well. Um, and we understand that all of our players have different uh, different paths of life and, and where they are in life. You know, yeah. some of some of us are are you know still in college. Some of us are in the uh, in the workforce. And you know, we actually have one player that's still in high school. So um, everybody has completely different schedules and. Uh, what I've said to them is like, I understand we all have schedules, but as a top 16 team at this current time, we have to, you know, find a little bit of dedication for the competitive scene. Right. And that is what we have done. So I've gotten everybody's schedules and whenever we can find time to fit in between, because every day changes, but every time we find time to to uh, play with each other, we'll schedule a time on that day and we will go five men for that day. So some days we're we're playing at seven, some days we're playing at 10, and you know some days we're playing in the mornings. It just, it just really depends on uh, the schedule of our players, but we, we do our best to work around it. That way we can stay up to date, stay fresh, and and uh, give it our all in this tournament. And that is awesome. And that's actually a lot of the difference between an A pro scene and in the rest of the world, because a lot of players here are just like you, you know, college students or professionals who work in, or even students who are younger. So I think you guys are doing a fantastic job. Now I got a question. I think a lot of viewers have the same question is like, how do you even get to know Mobile Legends? Because like you mentioned in earlier, you just said you were a caster before. And for those that recognize Boko Rosco, this is one of the best casters in a scene who happened to be one of the best players as well. And he just decided to play instead of the cast, but we might have to invite him back to join the caster's desk sometime. So just go ahead, so tell the viewers, like, how do you get to know Mobile Legends? Yeah, I came in contact with the game, I would say maybe about two years ago. I am I know there's a lot of veteran pro players out there who've been playing since like season three, season four. I came in right around season 16, season 17, just as a casual player. I liked the, um, I liked how the game had multiple aspects in it, how you could, you know, play the brawl, you could go right. into rank, casual, magic, chess, all these fun different designs in the game. Um, and that really attracted me. And I just I just checked it out for the, the fun aspect of it uh, completely. And then um, as I started playing it, I was like, oh, you know, I, I like the competitive scene. I like the rank. I want to get better and better. And, um, you know, I just started grinding and, and playing it, uh, streaming it, falling in love with the game more and more, falling in love with Alice, because I was known as a, a one-trick Alice back in the day. That's the only hero I would play. I didn't care where it was. I had to play Alice. Um, <laughs> you know, it, you would not see me playing another hero. And But, I, you know, I loved I loved the game. I loved the, um, the whole idea of it. And then just from there, you know, I started getting rank-ups, and uh, I, I noticed that there was an eSports uh, e scene for it. So. Right, right. Um, I saw the first, uh, the first one I saw was, uh, the infamous BTK versus Gosu game. Um, Absolutely. I, I remember that tournament and I was just like, oh my gosh, I didn't really understand what recalling was, you know, <laughs> I didn't, I didn't understand the entire thing. I didn't, I was like, uh, what, they're just, they're just spamming a recall. I didn't, you know, I was brand new to the game. So, <laughs> but I see this and I'm just, I'm infatuated with it because it got so much traction, so much attention. You know, it really, that was really like a, I would say the first arc of like the NA scene because we were we were starting to get talked about and then after that I was like man I, I really want to be a part of this in any way I can and 
you know, I, I, I was thankful enough for, for you for, for offering the opportunity of being a caster. That was uh, an amazing time. And I'm, I'm sitting here at a, at a crossroad as a top 16 player and also as a, as a caster that I do love. Um, I really love being a play-by-play -play and I'm just like, you know, what route can I take? And I'm, I'm happy to hear that we're, you know, we, maybe we can get some sort of guest casting down the road. Right, absolutely. And if you have some suggestions for Boca, remember this guy right here, this upcoming star is a streamer, is a content creator, makes videos and streams on a regular basis. So why don't you go ahead and tell the viewers a little bit like how do they find you? What are the platforms you stream on and make content on so they can search you up and really come here and support your uh, content? Yeah, for sure. So I'm a partnered content creator uh, over on Twitch. Um, if you guys want to head over there, twitch.tv slash Boca Roscoe, B-O-C-A-R-O-S-C-O-E. That's my main handle. And uh, recently I've been getting into the TikTok scene. I'm trying to <laughs> build up the TikTok in light of uh, TikTok streams going live um, for all creators. So yeah. if you guys want to help out there, you know, uh, TikTok, the TikTok.com. Yeah, and TikTok. we'll have Boca's yeah. uh, links in the description. So make sure to go ahead and follow this guy. Again, it's upcoming star in the NA scene. Uh, by the way, I know you're a supreme Sicilian. Like, why do you even pick this character to like to begin with? I mean, like, there are tons of other characters, like you said, Alice, which I think is pretty strong with the recent changes. But you know, people are still not playing it. Like, like, why pick Sicilian over any any other mage? I have some lore to that, and uh, it's a really good question. So, um, as per uh, Sicilian, um, I think uh, I'm in the KOL, and um, <laughs> when the Starlight came out, it was a uh, it was a mission that all KOL uh, creators try out the Sicilian. Or you didn't have to, you know what I mean. But uh, all, KOL, <laughs> all KOL creators were were doing the Sicilian um, Sicilian Starlight because we're you know checking out the new skin. And I tried them out. And actually, this video is highlighted on Twitch. If anyone wants to go see that, it's uh, it's quite interesting because it's my first ever Sicilian game. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, I hate this mage. This is horrid. I'm like, he's so late game. Oh my gosh. Like I I don't understand the functions. He runs out of mana. And I, I just sat there and I kept playing him and then but then I noticed I was like, wait a minute, his late game damage is really good. Is there a way in the pro scene to be able to, you know, farm his stacks quicker than usual? You know, make sure you're consistently stacking, building up that damage. The second you get that lightning trunch online, you're doing immense burst damage. And that's yeah. why I think he's so strong, is because the, the lightning trunch passive Right. Uh, works directly with his passive. So he has a maxed out lightning trunch at eight to nine minutes and right. no other mage can say that. Uh, maybe Alice now because of her new passive, but that's that's discussion for another time. <laughs> um, but yeah, so Sicilian just looks really strong and um, I just I just came to love him because I mean the the amount of damage output I can do with him around that 10 minute mark is is just something you can't see with a lot of mages right. unless they're hyper farmed. Yeah, absolutely. You know, like I was actually about to ask, like, do you can give the player some tips on like, okay, when do you usually hit the second power spike, second item, the clock of destiny, lightning tranching we're talking about? And you just mentioned 89 minutes. And that's exactly right. Cause I see most majors get their first item around five minutes. So then yeah. you speed it up and you get like around eight. That's just, you answer like my future questions. You know, that's, uh, that's <laughs> insane. <laughs> I mean, like, are you exploring at any other uh, mages right now any other like or even position any other roles you want to play or are you really just in love with the mid lane and then looking into other mages other options so yeah i'm in love with the mid lane i think um i've taken more of an igl role on the on the bloodhounds uh just because i feel like the the mid lane you have so much action going on i'm able to rotate to any lane invade defend right, right. you know i'm i'm sort of the core center with the tank and the jungler right. so I enjoy being that sort of uh, that leader role where I can control, you know, if I push this mid wave in, I can calm to everybody. Hey guys, let's rotate top or let's invade. Let's whatever we're doing. I'm able to I'm able to kind of steer that ship. And I, I enjoy being that guy um, uh, in the mid lane. And so as per other mages, yes, I have to explore other mages because <laughs> um, in, the, in the most recent game, they the caster said why aren't they banning Cecil? Why aren't they banning Cecil? Game three. Why aren't they like they're just like everyone's bringing up just ban Cecil, just ban Cecil. And I'm like, okay, if everybody's gonna say ban Cecil, I'll learn new mages. Fine, fine, fine. So no longer a one trick. I've been I've been right, practicing right. this entire new season, trying new heroes, trying new builds, checking out the new glowing wand patch. You know, and I think there's a lot of strong mages out there that we're just gonna have to wait to see what happens tonight that I do. And you're absolutely right. Now you bring up the glowing one. I think that really brought up a lot of the old OG mages that were mm -hmm. kind of falling off the favorites and now coming back into the scene. You know, I've been 
a big fan of Valir, <laughs> as you noticed. Yeah, so I've heard. <laughs> yeah, but there's definitely well. a lot of mages that's really good with Golden One, as long as the passive works with it. So here, this is going to wrap it up for our tournament, but is there anything else that you want to tell our viewers, like anything you want to tell to your fans uh, that's going to come here support Bloodhounds? Because I'm ready to watch your game tonight, to be honest. Yeah, uh, we're excited as well, and, and to everybody out there, you know, we hope that we can... Uh, put on a show whether we win whether we lose you just know that we're going to be trying our best we've been preparing for this and um you know yeah may the may the best teams win really yeah. is all all right thank you so much boca <laughs> and one more time guys you can follow boca with all the social links in description so go ahead and do that immediately big shout out for him to take the interview so with that being said have a wonderful day this is going to wrap it up for us tonight and we'll see you guys next time we'll see you guys on nact battlefield